ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, I did say that I wasn't planning on doing any more videos on this channel or the other until I put videos up on the Eon TV channel. The Eon.TV channel will be up soon. I just have to learn certain software. I don't have time because I'm busy doing motions for people and being interfered with by so many other factors. As a matter of fact, um, I'm going to take a brief moment and talk to some of you about AmeriLegion because I think many people have gotten a misunderstanding about AmeriLegion and I'm disappointed in that. Ladies and gentlemen, the law says that you have a right to challenge a debt once someone claims that you owe a debt. However, what you don't know and what nobody's ever told you that if you challenge a debt, you must have your own accounting. I know. You've often gone into court and you've never produced an accounting. You've never produced, this is what I paid, this is what I've done. And because you haven't done that, you've not overcome the burden that has been placed upon you. You see, the court says that if the other party comes in claiming you owe them a debt, then you now have the burden of proving you don't owe a debt. They don't have to prove you owe the debt. All they got to do is produce a contract. And they do. They produce a deed of trust in most cases. They produce a signed contract where you applied for a loan. But you don't know the law because you've not read it. Go ahead. 12 U.S.C. 411. It says that there must be an application with every loan. So that's why you have to fill out an application. But you don't even know that that's the reason why you must fill out an application. You must apply application. You must apply. That's where the word application comes from. For a loan. Just like you must apply for a driver's license. But you don't understand. That's the contract. The promissory note is not the contract. It's only antecedent to the, pro the promise to pay. There must be an application. Why? Because you are the one who are the beneficiary of the trust account. It's your account. They need access. And you grant them access through the contract. It's okay. Don't worry about it. I know many of you knew this. But what you didn't understand, that there had to be an accounting. And there had to be a challenging of the debt. And it has to be documented. That's what AmeriLegion is doing for you. AmeriLegion is not getting rid of your debt. AmeriLegion is helping you document your debt. Nobody else is doing that for anybody. Go and look. There is no company doing anything like that for the people. That's what AmeriLegion is doing for you. And you think, well, I can do this on my own. No, you can't do it on your own. Because AmeriLegion is taking care of seven different steps. They're even contacting the credit bureaus for you doing the 1099Cs. And they're not charging thousands. Well, technically, they're giving you a discount. The normal rate is $3,900. I told you when I did it, I paid $3,500, and the individual didn't do all of the things I'm doing. AmeriLegion is not offsetting your debt. Once the letter goes to the credit bureaus, then you get to let the credit bureaus know, I need you to remove this, and if you fail to remove this, I'm suing you. I'm not suing that company because you can't not report a debt unless it's verified. Ladies and gentlemen, the courts have already documented, and the Mayor Legion is putting that in their documents, that verification does not mean sending me a letter without a signature on it, sending me a letter with a bunch of numbers on it. That's not verification. That's not proof of anything. The courts have already documented that. That's what AmeriLegion is doing for people. Thank you for letting me take the time to explain that. I'm about to play this video right here, and I like it, but I'm about to play it. And then we're going to get into the other natures of why I'm doing the video. One second, ladies and gentlemen. Well, children, well, there's so much racket, there must be something out of kilter. I think that twixt the, the Negroes of the South and the women at the North all talking about rights, these white men gonna be in a fix pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> but what's all this here talking about? That man over there says that women need to be helped into carriages and, and lifted over ditches and to have the best place everywhere. 
Nobody ever helped me in the carriages or over mud puddles or gives me in the best place. Ain't I a woman? Look at me. Look at my arms. I have plowed and planted and, and gathered in the barns and no man can head me. And ain't I a woman? I could work as much and, and, and eat as much as a man when I could get it and bear the lash as well. And ain't I a woman? I have born 13 children and seen most all sold off to slavery. And when I cried out with my mother's grief, none but Jesus heard me. And ain't I, ain't I a woman? Then they, they, they talk about this, this thing in the head. What's this they call it? What's this they call it? Intellect, that's it, honey. Intellect. What's that got to do with women's rights and Negroes' rights? If my cup were whole but a pot and yours are whole a quart, wouldn't you be mean not to let me have my little half measure fool? And then that, that, that man back there in the black, that man back in the black says that women can't have as much rights as men because Christ wasn't a woman. Mm. Where did your Christ come from? Mm. Where did your Christ come from? From God and a woman. Man had nothing to do with him. <laughs> Now, if the, if the first woman that God ever made was strong enough to turn this world upside down all alone, these women together ought to be able to turn it back and get it right side up again. And now, they's asking to do it. And you men, you men better let them. Obliged to you. Thank you for letting me speak to you this morning. Now, old Sir Jordan ain't got nothing more to say. 